I thought tonight we would return to the puzzles. I know a lot of people, they really like the, uh, the strategical puzzle episodes. So I thought, yeah, we'll give, do a little more puzzles. Um, those are always fun. I picked out three. Hopefully we have time to go over all of them tonight. And tonight's theme is going to be peace play, which can mean a lot of things. So peace play can mean maneuvering. It can mean improving your worst place peace. Um, it can mean, you know, uh, restricting your opponent's plans with your pieces. So it can mean sort of a lot of things. I just like to pick out sort of puzzles that are strategic in nature rather than tactical puzzles. And the one big problem with this, I guess, for uh, in a certain sense is when you do a tactic, of course, there's okay a big checkmate or there's some obvious you win material and you get this satisfaction that you did indeed definitely pick the very best move. And a lot of the moves tonight might, if you ask a computer, be relatively the same or the you know, it, the uh, evaluation stays relatively the same, but yet there's all sorts of little things that at least when two humans are playing do make a big difference. So we'll see a lot of positions tonight where even though the human, uh, the computer says oh, zero, 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 it'll be one side is just obviously better or worse. And at our human mortal level, that's where games are really won and lost. Mm -hmm. Somebody gets a better position and then it becomes harder and harder to play the side that is uh, losing or on the the wrong side of equality. So uh, we're going to throw it over to the board right now in our first puzzle. This is uh, Ivan Sokolov versus Trajzi Nedev. Um, I'm not going to pronounce any names right because I never do. But uh, in this position here, so it's uh, white to move. Lex's last move was king to c7. And I do want to give the audience uh, a little bit of time here. Some people that were here early have already had some time, but at home, for a lot of these puzzles, you do want to pause because the people here, they're going to get five minutes to think about it. So you really do want to pause your video to get the, the same effect as the live audience here. Or more, you can take as much time as you want at home. Um, okay, it's white to move. And, and before we, we talk about the position, we'll give you guys a chance. And then hopefully we can assess this position and, and talk about what's going on and see if we can come up with the moves that uh, they came up with in the game. And again, it's, and sort of it's, it's piece play, so we do want to kind of think of our piecing. The general theme is going to be take a piece, maybe your worst place piece, or maybe a piece that's just not on the dream square, could be a little bit better, and find a better square. For a knight, find a great outpost. For a bishop, find a nice diagonal. You know, for rooks, find some open files. That's sort of a, a deal. So I think, did you have your hand up? Bishop to d2, I mean knight to d2. Knight to d2, okay, where are you going? Well, I'd like to get to a you want to get to a4? I mean, uh, b, b5. You want to get to b5, OK? And so you're, you're doing this? Yeah. OK, so yes, yeah, so if I just wait and you're, you're going here? Yeah. I don't know, and I'd probably just bring my stuff in. And yeah, when you, I can push here. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, I think over the last few moves, black's position has improved a lot more than, than white's. So. It's a bit slow and it, you know, it is a square where it's not really a, a permanent square. If you could just right. jump there right now and, you know, with a big check, then maybe right. it would be a decent move. Like heading over there, maybe mm -hmm. uh, Yeah. Simple developing move, bishop uh, d3. Bishop d3, okay. Um, and do you have a, any big idea after, I'll just make some move. I, I want to. Okay, and you're going to put the bishop on this diagonal. Um, well, I guess I, all right, so I know what you want to do, so I guess I'll stop you. And, and yeah, with a lot of these, I mean, there's probably a lot of moves that, um, okay, don't really, again, they don't act like there's necessarily one right or wrong move. But um, I'm not sure that this is necessarily the right square for the bishop, especially if I don't ever let you go to e4. But I mean, I don't think that's, that's bad at all either, so. E2 is better, e2 is better you think? Okay, and I'll just, I'll just keep doing nothing just to see what you're, what you're up to. Did you have any plans from here? No definite plan. No. And I guess too, thinking a little bit, uh, in a little bit different way about the position. Um, we do kind of want to see, when we're looking at our pieces, we're trying to see you know, who's, who's looking good, who's not looking good. Um, okay, you could be a little bit better. 
you're, you're decent. You have some, some potential. That piece is OK. This piece is pretty nice. Um, this guy, um, we're looking at some stuff. He's probably not the best. This bishop, you know, probably not the best. I got to find some better squares. Uh, and I'm going to give the answer away. So again, at home, you can pause if you need more time. But in the game, white chose the move, if it'll let me, f5, deciding that this is the best diagonal for the bishop. And uh, if you remember too, so this was black's last move. So OK, it makes sense to take this bishop that isn't doing a whole lot. You know, I don't need to really watch the d4 square because I have my pawn here. Well, I want to get onto this diagonal. And black saw that and stopped him. In the game, the move g5 was played. Also possible is a move like e5. So I think both of these moves should be considered. And just to give you an example of what might happen here, we can take and toss this check in, trying to provoke the pawn forward. And in a position like this, well, maybe I, you know, now that I, I provoked your pawn forward, maybe I got the d5 square. And maybe I just have the long-term plan of, of getting my knight to the d5 square. So something like this also was possible. Uh, so that's perhaps why in the game the opponent chose g5. OK, so they, he's not letting you go to that diagonal. So again, we got we to gotta rethink this. And this is the move that I quite liked about this game, this next move here. Um, the first move, yeah, I mean, there's a whole bunch of plans that are perhaps perfectly fine for white to try. But I do like this move here. So again, I'll give you guys a little bit of time. You can pause at home. White uh, actually did find a way to get back on that diagonal. So black stopped him. But he didn't say, you know, OK, I guess I, I didn't get it, darn, and then played some other random move. He was, he was insistent. He wanted to get to that diagonal. So he found a way. And can we shut the door in the back? Because it's, it's terrifying out there. Scary world, people. It's dark. It's dark. It gets dark early now. So in the game, bishop g1. So he's really insisting on getting onto that diagonal. OK. So f6, he's trying to shore up some of the dark squares. He's trying to get a grip on e5. He anticipates white's next move. And he plays the move e5, which is a temporary pawn sacrifice, because we can take on Passant. Um, the alternative is knight d to e5. But this isn't super appealing when you see that we can take once and drop our rook in, and we're probably going to win a pawn. And also, we're also threatening to take with the rook. So we're threatening to capture two different ways. Uh, so for that reason, he temporarily gave up a pawn with the idea that now he's blockaded, and my next move is bishop takes e6. So white decided, well, uh, if you really want that pawn, you're going to have to work for it. You can go get it. So he kind of finds an annoying way for uh, his opponent to have to go get the pawn. OK, so I have to go pick it up with my rook. And now the pawn structure has sort of changed on the queen side. So again, we're going to see white just get his pieces into the game, so you'll notice some you know, files are open slash half open over on the queen side. Stuff has opened up there a little bit. And so now uh, this move, uh, OK, the next two moves are not brilliant. You're not going to be blown off the board. But it's these simple moves that sometimes people struggle to find in their own games. So I guess I'll just ask what you guys would, would do here. What's your next couple of moves, the plan, just to improve your pieces, get pieces that aren't doing stuff into the game. Uh, the rook, rook d5 idea. All right, rook d5. Um, no, and what? Oh, Are you worried about this move? Yeah, but I mean, okay, yeah, I was just—I was going to take the pawn first, I guess. And yeah, so it's—it could be a good square, but now it's with these pawns gone. I guess it's not a very permanent square, is it? Because you're right. Yeah, bishop e6 might come at some point soon here. So it's just a simple move. I mean, what's, I guess what's the most natural move if you develop your pieces? Bishop e2. All right, and he took it. And he just brings another piece into the game. Rook f1. 
So yeah, now that there's stuff going on over here, we're thinking about taking the knight and the rook can start to infiltrate somewhere along the f-file. That's exactly what happened. So he took, and in goes the rook. And the computer here says 0, 0, 0. And black played this move. You know, he brought his rook from one bad square to another. So in general, if black has to play a move like this, I mean, no, whatever the computer really says, it's, it's kind of obvious that white is actually better here, just because it's, there's so many targets that white is looking at. So you'd really rather be white here. Um, OK, all of my pieces are suddenly good. This, this guy's great. This guy's great. This, this guy's got some pressure. Um, this guy, he might have a future. And so this also is important, too. So this next move is a really nice one. So I'll let you guys try to figure it out. Um, you know, so it's good we got all these nice targets, but how are we going to keep improving our position? Can we find even more squares for some of our pieces here? And this is really what I want to do, too, because you're, you got pressure here. I don't want my rook here all day babysitting this pawn. So my next move, if you let me, I'm going to play the move h5. Yeah. Bishop h5, yeah. So this is an excellent move. Um, the bishop comes to a, a better square. Perhaps in the future, we can remaneuver to some square over here. Or, you know, somehow we can find a better square on the board. But also, you're maintaining this target. So now the h-pawn is just a fixed target. And my piece is really active. And you can sit here and watch your own pawn. Um, so a very good move. And you know, this is the kind of piece play that you, you do want to be looking for in your game. OK? And so now, um, from here, I guess this will have to finish it for this exercise, because I do want to get to the other ones. We'll look at the conclusion of the game. I guess there's one more interesting point. Um, it was in this position. And so here again, you'll notice that over the last couple of moves, white's pieces just keep improving. You know, now with you know, the light squared bishop into it, the attack too. So now this is just uh, fantastic for white. However, the computer is like, no big deal. It's equal. But black has to find an only move here that I think is really challenging. So I did give, I gave somebody at the club a lot of time. And they, they came up with half of the idea. And they're pretty decently high rated players. So um, I'll give you a chance just to see how you could play this as black. Because there is one move that can sort of save this position for black. Um, but again, this is sort of. When you get these better positions like this, it becomes really, really hard as the defender to find all of these moves, especially when they're um, sort of spectacular. There's an idea that you, you need to understand in order to solve this that, OK, is not so apparent. Um, but uh, what might help, too, is if you think, what would white play if it was white's next turn? So we do a little prophylactic thinking. Um, and even when you know that, it's still <laughs> kind of hard to figure this one out. So I'll give you guys a chance. And OK, if it were white to move, what would white's move be in this position? How would white continue to improve his position? h5, yeah. If it's white's turn, h5, just solidifying his position there. Uh, the pawn forever remains a target here on h6. And obviously, my bishop's not going to get locked out of the game, so now I can uh, you know, continue with ideas. So if Black plays h5 right away. Um, I'm pretty sure the move was here. So before, I don't want to take on h5 just yet. Uh, I go here, so I, now I'm still threatening your h pawn. But I'm not going to let you play g3 and, and kick me away. And it's hard to defend. So this is the right idea, but this is not quite right. We can do even better. So even knowing the idea, it's still pretty difficult, which you know, so if you have this position in the game and, you know, your computer's laughing, haha, everything's equal, it's, it's not always so true when humans are playing. So it's, it's very hard to find the next couple moves here for black. But uh, along the same lines, I'll just give it away. You have the sensational move G3. And, OK, what's, what's this all about? Um, what's that? H5 now. Yeah, now h5. Uh-huh. So you can't take, obviously, um, because I, there's this, 
I lined up your bishops. So if your light square bishop moves away, I take on g3. And if you just move away, this is the last move that you have to find. Bishop g4. And black has consolidated, and your computer will defend this perfectly to a draw. But not so easy at all uh, when you're playing in an actual game. And um, just going back just to show the, the beginning of this puzzle one more time. It came from White just identifying where he wanted to improve his pieces. He said, well, uh, just thinking about this bishop, if I'm just thinking what diagonal do I want him on, I want him on the same diagonal as my opponent's king. And that's from there, um, all sorts of good stuff kept happening. And he, he had the same idea. So bishop g1 was an excellent move. Um, and from there, it just kind of played itself. He just sort of naturally got his pieces in, and they, uh, he just slowly outplayed his opponent. All right. OK, let's look at, uh, at one more here. Let's see. OK, so black's last move was f6. <clears throat> and this is the sort of pawn structure you can get in positions where the black queen goes to b6 and trades for a queen on b3 and the a pawn took back. And there's sort of well-known ideas in this type of position. Uh, all, all the time, White is trying to think about tactically making a move like b5 work in this type of position. So that's definitely a feature. And uh, there is a, a maneuver here that White has. So thinking about the pieces, there's one way he can really increase the pressure on the queen side. But I'll, I'll give it to you guys and, and see what you guys come up with. But yeah, if you know this, this type of position, that's something that, that comes actually quite naturally. Uh, but yeah, so at home, you might want to uh, pause, but Claudio hit on it. You maneuver the knight over to a5, uh, which creates lots of pressure here on the queen side. So that's the maneuver. And I do like kind of what happened in this game. It, it got kind of tactical pretty fast which is what happens when you get your pieces to the most active squares. Well, the tactics normally are, are going to favor you. So here the move e5 was played, which is a mistake. But the position's already quite difficult. Um, relatively best would have been to passively defend the queen side. I mean, obviously, white is much better here. So you can see why black wouldn't want to defend like this forever. So OK, he's going for counterplay, e5. Um, 95. And yeah, this is this is quite bad. In the game, rook c7, which doesn't work as we'll see. Um, you can also put the rook on b8. This also doesn't quite work. But again, I, I kind of like this. It's it's sort of difficult, I think, to find the absolute strongest move here for white. So this is going to be the real task for this puzzle is, is sort of figuring out what white should do. Well, you got this great position. Black's pieces are really tied down on the queen side. Um, obviously, you're looking for all sorts of different sacrifices that might work. Um, we'll see. Can we find the absolute strongest move here for white? And there's at least two moves that win pretty convincingly. Yeah. I want to put it on b5 and it takes with uh, it okay. takes with a pawn then. I don't think this quite works, but but maybe did you have an idea here? OK, what was the idea? Because it might work in other variations. Taking on c6. OK, right, a very interesting idea, right? So if I take here, then you can throw this in. Yeah. Um, but then you realized I can take here. OK. Mm -hmm. So yeah, very interesting idea. And these are this is indeed the kind of sacrifice that you are looking for in this structure. So after having maneuvered our piece over to this very active square, we are looking for the move b5 at all times. But here, unfortunately, it just doesn't quite work. Bishop f1. 
uh, which is in general a better square for the bishop. Um, but uh, I mean, let me just let me just see what your point is. Let me just pass for a second. Same thing. You want to play b5? Is that your point? Okay, I'll take it. Same problem. Yeah. Um, so this actually, in a lot of lines, it might be a better diagonal. So I'm, I'm seeing that you guys notice that this is probably not the best diagonal for the bishop. So you know, a very common way when it's not in a good diagonal is to obviously go to try to find a better diagonal for the bishop. There's also another way that it can stay on the diagonal, um, and that is to just continue to attack the, uh, the wall that you're staring at. So e4 is surprisingly the strongest move in this position. And yeah, the tension really favors white, because now we're taking here with everything. And as white, we're a lot uh, better prepared for the center to just blow wide open, because then this bishop is also going to be adding pressure down this diagonal. So it doesn't matter whichever way you take. Um, uh, I don't want to take either way. But you know, if you take something like this, then you're just you're bringing my pieces into the game, and now I might go to e6. This is um, it's going to really fall apart here for black. So a move like e4 in such a position is another way to get the bishop that is staring at the wall into the game. Um, another surprising move. There's also a tactical continuation that white can do that's perhaps more spectacular. Um, it's, it's too bad it's it's slightly inferior. You can actually take here on b7, a very surprising sacrifice. And if they take, um, you have to find the next move. So if you gave up your knight, you better have seen this next move, which is, OK, it's quite amazing. So b5, yeah, look at that. So if we take this way, we're going to run into a fork. This pawn is pinned. So. Perhaps relatively best might be to sacrifice the exchange, um, which is okay, which is perfectly fine for us because we're gonna take this, and okay, now we got this passer here, so that's fine for us. We're happy with that. Um, but what if I play here? I think I think it might be difficult to find the right continuation here as white. So again, it's and so here we can see because tactics are are really related to piece play. You get your pieces to all the great squares, and then there's going to be all these, these tactics that are going to favor you. Um, and again, I think there's, there's more than one move here. But um, like e4, I think, is probably super strong here as well. But you can even take this. And if they take back, you can take on d5. And this is going to be very good for white. So, that's, so there's all these sacrifices that can occur. And they happen because. Well, we got all of our pieces aiming at your weaknesses here. Um, in the game, rook to c7, which is even worse. And uh, again, e4 is super strong in this position. But in the game, a very typical sacrifice, b5. And after black took, there's just one more move here to find. I'm looking at you. Yeah, well, no, it's the same idea because it works here. It, it works here, awesome. exactly. Yeah. So he took here, and black resigned. If you take the knight, I take on a8. And if you take, or, well, yeah, if you take here, I take, oh, I can't click the thing. Yeah, so here, here. And yeah, if here, you toss in this check, and wherever the king goes, uh, wherever the king goes, you take this. And OK, we're all over d5. <laughs> um, and so for that reason, black already resigned, um, which is a little bit early, but you are, you are losing in this position. So fantastic. So I just wanted to show that just to illustrate, just so if you've never seen this kind of type of position before. Um, this is a very, very common maneuver. They weaken the dark squares, so you maneuver your knight to a dark square, and then you get all sorts of potential to sacrifice your pieces. OK. One more, saving the best for last. So this is the game Michael Prusikin versus Wolfgang Ullman from uh, an indecipherable year. 
But I know Jason really needs to know that it was 2004. All right, we'll blow this up again for the audience. OK, so in this position, it's white to move. And this is a, a King's Indian pawn structure. And you'll realize uh, this is a very closed position. So often in the King's Indian, black gets a big attack on the king side. But now with the king side closed like this, there's no meaningful breaks that black will ever achieve over there. F5 should probably never work because we got everything that can take it. So all of the action is going to be on the queen side in this position. So you can uh, kind of tell, and it's white that has a little bit more space. And um, well, I'll give you guys a little bit of time to, to think about what you would play in this position. But uh, obviously, we need to sort of get our pieces to the queen side, tidy up our position. And there's a couple of moves that I think uh, were very, very nice. And what I like about this puzzle, too, is that they're all correct. So they're actually like the computer moves. It's not like everything's 0, 0, 0. Uh, I think White actually did play the best moves, at least for as long as we're going to look at the puzzle. It was like a 90 move game, though, and there was like a lot of mistakes. So the thing about this game, so we won't watch the whole thing, is White played brilliantly for the next few moves, got a good position, and then it was like drawing, then White was losing, and then White won. Um, OK, so lots of mistakes were made in this game, but the next couple of maneuvers that White played were really instructive, and I think this is the best uh, game of the bunch. So I will uh, be quiet for a few minutes here. I'll give you guys five minutes probably. And OK, at home, go ahead and pause your, pause your videos and take as much time as you need. You got it? You have an idea? All right, what's your idea? B5? OK, let me see if I can hit Enter really fast so people don't see the, the actual thing. Um, so now I can just, if I want, totally lock it up. That's up to me. You know, I could play A5. Um, so I'm wondering as black, can I you know, maybe play a move like rook A7 or just queen B8 or something and just, I just want to play like here. Um, and so I, I want to keep the option. I, I think as black here, I think I might actually start thinking about trying to play for an advantage. I mean, I think I can go here if I just want to be boring and, and draw. Um, but OK. But, did you have an idea beyond that, or what did you think? What was the, why did you play the move before? Mm hmm. And I guess too, who do you think is better? Because if you play the move b5 and you allow a5, you're just saying it's a draw. You know, so maybe if you think you're worse, that's something that you would consider. Um, I think white, you have a little bit more space. I think the tension here favors you because. Black never really wants to think about taking this, because whenever we take back, we're going to have some pressure on the A pawn and stuff like that. Um, so I think you, you as white here should be trying to increase your advantage, and you don't want to play a move like b5. Giving away the tension, I think, here is, is going to favor black. So let's see if we can, we can be a little more ambitious here with white. Ah, very interesting idea. Yeah, so Claudio wants to put all of his rooks on the B file, which is exactly what happened. Uh, he chose to go to H2 first, but that's the idea. The rook swings over to the B file. So yeah, all these pieces in the way, it's, you know, it's hard to get your rook over to the B file, and that's where it needs to be. Well, OK, so he just goes over all the pieces and uh, goes laterally. So that's exactly what happened. OK, and both players just played a couple moves here. And now in this position, this is the, the real fantastic part. So White now played a, a fantastic maneuver, thinking about all of his pieces here. And he found a way to get some pieces to a, a slightly better spot. And so this, this is fantastic, what White chose to do here. Um, so again, you want to pause at home. Again, I'm going to give you guys lots of time. And I'll be really impressed if people do come up with the move that was chosen in the game. Just give up. No idea. 
Uh, it is quite difficult. I mean, so even at home, if, if people do find this, um, it's quite impressive just to have this, this conception here. So some people are really trying, and some people are falling asleep. Like, uh, I'll never find it. Yeah, so white to move. Knight to f5. Hit the return button real quick. Um, do you do you think this? I guess in this position too. So you're offering this this trade, which I don't know. Maybe you're trying to get the e4 square. Like if I take back, you're gonna try to get the e4 square for your knight. But I guess too, just looking at the knights, um, which I think this knight is just superior because this guy is kind of out of the game. I don't know how he plans on getting back into the game. Um, but I guess even if I I mean, because I don't have to take, obviously. I can defend my knight or move my knight. But, uh, but OK, but if I did take it, your point, you were taking this way? or And you got, you got a nice, yeah, so maybe I don't want to take that. Maybe I. This one? Yeah. In this position, or in which position? Right here. Right here, do I sack for the h-pawn? This one? You're just sacking everything? I'll just keep taking it until I understand <laughs> what's going on. OK, well, how else, how else can we give more pieces away? I, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Um, it's not that. So yeah, so again, it's, it's not like a sacrifice or anything. Eventually, white is going to do something on the queen side. Eventually, I'll take, or eventually, I'll play a4, a5, and I'll open the queen side somehow. But uh, I can be a little bit patient. I have more space. I'm just kind of sitting on you. Uh, I still have time to improve my position, get it to the, the maximal. I want to look at every single one of my pieces, make sure every one of them is exactly where I want them to be. And only then will I think about opening the queen side. Because it's actually quite difficult for black to be the one that starts opening the queen side. And we'll see that in the game. Eventually, black got a little antsy. And he's like, well, you know, I see that you're slowly improving your position. I'm going to break. And uh, it didn't work out in the game. So we will get to see that. But did you have an idea? I was just, just copying what Claudio had said earlier. I mean, the whole idea of the H, rook, H1, H2. Yeah, rook, rook B1, rook A to B1, perfectly fine move. Great move. You know, nothing wrong with that. Um, it wasn't chosen in the game, but no, no, there's nothing wrong with that. Which is the thing about strategic puzzles, you know, it's not, it's not like so instantly satisfying. I'm sure there, there's lots of just normal improving tidying moves that are, are perfectly valid. Um, so there's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, but I do like this move. So if you, do, if you have come up with this one, then, you know, again, a big congrats, because this is, this is fantastic. And so, okay, so we know where these guys are going to go. Let's think about all our pieces here. We know about these rooks. We got an idea, you know, probably they go on the B file. I'm just kind of hanging out here just to make sure you never take, because then I'd already have A file pressure with my rook. Uh, well, my knights, fantastic, fantastic. Um, you know, both my bishops could be a little bit better, which is the thing about the closed positions. You know, obviously they're going to favor the knights, so I mean, nobody really has fantastic bishops. Um, I guess this, this guy's okay. He's got some potential. Uh, but, uh, there's a guy we haven't been focusing on. The king, huh? So where can I, where should I go? Like if I can teleport, and this is kind of how you can find it. I mean, however you want to think about it, I like to think about just picking it up and teleporting somewhere. I can go anywhere on this board. Where would I go? Um, that's sort of the first step. And then you can sort of figure out how do I get it there. So I guess where should that guy be? He actually could be in a slightly safer spot on the board. If I'm going to open up the queen side, why don't I put him on the king side? Exactly, that's well said. So that's exactly what white did. He played king to h2. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, it took him, he had to use a few moves to get there. But how did he do it? Bishop g2. Bishop g2. So yeah, fantastic idea. So yeah, again, congrats if you, you did come up with this idea. And the idea is run the king to h2. That's the idea. So I, the you know, I'm going to open it up eventually, but uh, look at this. All right, I just crawl on over. <laughs> I just make my way over, put the bishop back. And uh, 
Black can't take it anymore. Okay, let's open it up. Let's do stuff on the king side, on the queen side, sorry. Well, okay, so probably he should just keep being patient, moving his pieces back and forth, not doing anything. Uh, but it's hard to not do anything, especially when it looks like white is making progress. You know, my king goes to h2, and he's, he's getting a little worried, so he, he goes for it, b5. But this isn't entirely correct. So whenever this happens, OK, now we do really need to stop here. We're like, well, stuff is happening. Um, now there's some action going on over there. So we need to take our time and calculate. In the game, just king h2 was played, which is a fine move strategically. It makes a lot of sense. But white actually did miss an opportunity here to get a large advantage in this position. So go ahead and, OK, now we, there's so much tension. We need to calculate all of these captures. Uh, if you know, we don't see anything there, or we don't think we should do anything, then king h2 is, is the right move. But there actually is something here. And it's, OK, it's complicated position, so. C-pawn takes b5. Is the best move. Yeah, good job. <laughs> um, that's good. Yeah, Ken West, he just woke up from a coma and he like he just he already knew the best move, so that was good. Um, yeah, I know you've you said you were gonna fall asleep before the lecture. Um, and okay, I mean if you just take back routinely, well I have my knight and my bishop are on b five, so you can't really do that. Perhaps White was worried about this move. Okay, seems sensible, and now the rooks are attacking c three. But here, actually, you can play knight a4, threatening knight b6. OK, so I suppose I go here. And this is obviously kind of complicated. And so when you've been playing a closed position for a long time, sometimes it's hard to change back into sort of you know tactical complicated mode. You just want to keep it. You're sort of like, ah, I still want to just make my slow improving moves. But here you actually have a, a great move. There's one move here that comes close to winning for white. It might, might be, be winning already, but it's, it's very close. Uh, white has a great move in this position. Exactly. b6. Yeah, great move. OK. You go over here. Now do be careful, because I'm attacking your knight. But uh, OK, if you just take this for example, uh, your position is just totally dominating here. OK, our, our knight can come into the game. And something like this is very, very good for white. All of the white pieces are, are about to come into the game very quickly. So this would just be, be crushing black. This is strategically lost already in this position. Um, in which? In, in, you know, threatening bishop takes a6. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, this is not good for black. This is, <laughs> he's going to collapse very quickly here. OK, well, let's look at what happened in the game. So, OK, admittedly, some mistakes were made at this point. Uh, I do want to, I just want to focus on one more point in this game. OK, so here he took on c4. So you do have to be kind of careful here as white. Uh, for example, if you just casually take back with something, well, maybe he takes on b4 and the rooks come alive. So you do have to be careful with which files you decide to keep open and which ones you decide to keep closed. So he said, I don't want the b file to be open. <laughs> um, I don't want the c file to open up, sorry. You know, I don't want these rooks crashing down on my knight. So I don't, I don't I'm not going to take on c4. b5. So temporarily, I'm down a pawn. But I, I need to keep the C file closed because you have two rooks there, and I have nothing there except for my, my little knight. Um, in comes the knight. So I'm, yeah, I'm not waiting for you to take my C pawn. Instead, I'll see if you'll give up my bishop. And really, this is not a bad trade for white at all because, well, that knight was pretty good. <laughs> and you know the bishop on f1, I don't know. I put a lot of pawns on light squares, so. I don't know. He wasn't, wasn't so fantastic. And all right, coming up soon, maybe I'll pick this guy up. So I think here, I think strategically, that's just already a, a great 
Success for white. I think he's, he's been outplaying his opponent. And he goes to c4. Threatening to push the pawn again. And he could have pushed two, but this, this also is fine. I'm not worried about you taking, because then my knights come to good squares. And I'm not worried about you bringing my pieces to good squares. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so if the knight does end up getting here, then there's a lot of pressure on d6. Excellent. I mean, and here he played this in the game. Uh, b6 is, I think, the most obvious, and it's just crushing. So we won't actually end the game. Uh, like here happened, and I mean, white's, white's better here, and then lots of mistakes were made. I just want to talk about uh, one, one possibility here in this position, because now, uh, OK, the move like rook b1, rook a to b1 is, is OK, it's great, great move. But there's actually a surprising tactic. So I do want to see if, how alert we've been here. This will be the very last position that we'll take a look at. Um, lots of people, I, I, you know, that's how I prep these lectures. I just show them to people in the club, see what they come up with. And OK, this has been quite a difficult one. And hopefully I, I give a hint before somebody actually says it. But I'll give you guys a, a minute. Oh, this is actually perfect. Oh. OK, white to move. And, and the hint is, if you were just walking in the room, it's a lot easier to find this tactic. These people have seen the game, so now they have no chance of finding this. But you can do it. So it's a tactic of not just winning one? Where? On oh. Oh, really <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's probably a fine move. You would. You can do it. You can do it. Come on, these guys have been in here looking at it for minutes. You just walk right in. Easy. Uh, and that is the big hint because, well, eh, I'll give him a chance. I'll see who wins, the audience or, or Owen. Let's go. Knight to a6. It's probably a good move, knight a5. Looks like a decent move, but I guess I take on b6, yeah. Knight a5, rook b6. Oh, you can do it. There's 20 people here. You can beat them. You can do it. It's the rush. Who can find it first? Oh, you just take the pawn on h4. Yeah. Owen, oh, nice. Yeah, if you're walking in the room, it's a lot easier because you haven't seen the last 20, 30 moves all over on the queen side. I should like No, you didn't say that, Ken. <laughs> Did you say that? Yeah. Uh, you say a lot of things, though. I do. We'll give all the credit to sure. Owen. Um, <laughs> So yeah, so this happens all the time too. So you're, uh, you're just doing things on the queen side for 30, 40 moves, and you just overlook something on the king side. So this is how the game. The oh, the knight's hanging. You su <laughs> <laughs> so you, su you suggested this move, and you you calculated this, and you didn't see the knight. Okay. Um, all right. We'll give all the credit to to Owen bidding in the audience for <laughs> solving it, and. Uh, and yeah, so I mean, that's just, again, that's the kind of thing that you can so easily overlook. When everything's happening on one side forever, you stop looking at the other side. But you always want to be vigilant at all parts of the board. So uh, OK, I hope you guys like those puzzles at home. If you like these kinds of lectures, let me know in the comments below. And we'll keep doing some uh, strategical puzzles in the future. Next week, we have a, a very special guest coming, Mario Roper. So hopefully that, that goes through as planned. So you guys will get to see another member profiled here on the show. Um, so until then, hit like, share, subscribe, and, and thanks everybody for coming out.